First, what I'd like to mention is that this has been quite a long process. It started off by the efforts to replace our organ. And what that led to was the fact that we, we felt like we needed to bring on a professional to study the acoustics of the room. And we we're very fortunate to find Scott Rodell and his team. As a member of the organ committee, I got to witness the process. And basically, Scott Rodell is not only a, an acoustical consultant, but he's an organist himself, and he's well known nationally to uh, the major organ builders in the country. So Scott was able to uh, connect us with a lot of builders, and uh, we learned a lot about their instruments. Uh, we actually took a trip down to Dallas, where over the course of two days, we visited several churches, listened to several organs, some spaces were very large and grand, some were sort of small and humble, like our space. And really having done so, we got a better sense on the different types of organ builders that are out there. Now, interestingly enough, uh, the organ builder we ended up selecting, their organ was not, they didn't have one in Dallas. But Scott encouraged us to give them a, a shot. And that company name is Gluck Pipe Organs out of New York. Uh, Sebastian Gluck is the owner of that company and uh, has a, an excellent reputation across the country as a, a builder of fine organs. And uh, so I did not go on that trip, but a couple of people went up to New York to listen to some of the Gluck pipe organs, meet Sebastian, and really came away very impressed. They came back, we had a vote, and it was decided to go with Gluck pipe organs. The church here has a seven rank organ that was built by the Reuter Company and we're taking out the organ today so that we can reuse the components from the Reuter organ in our new organ that we'll be building for Mayflower Church. We're taking out the pipes, four ranks of pipes are going to be reused in the new organ. That's about 250 pipes ranging in size from about eight feet long to about the size of a pencil. And so we take them out, make sure they're all with their brothers and sisters in the same set of pipes and store them in trays and we'll truck them back east. Then they'll be cleaned, uh, refurbished, along with the wind chests that the pipes sit on. Each organ has a number of wind chests that hold pressurized air that plays the pipes and also the actions that activate the pipes on the command of the organist at the keyboard. And we'll be reusing a few of those in the new organ as well. But the new organ will be about three to four times the size of the organ that they have right now. When an organ is commissioned by an individual or an institution, they're not just commissioning a musical instrument. A, it's a work of art. B, it, is, it, it serves a function. That function is a work of art that conveys other art over time. But they're commissioning a relationship with a family of craftsmen. And the best organs come to life when there is that happy relationship. And I've been fortunate here at Mayflower at our last instrument of Faith Lutheran Church, and really with all of our clients who commissioned organs, that it started out with this process of what are your needs? This is gonna be around hopefully for centuries. Organs do last for centuries. So because prior to those centuries of use, we're gonna be in your church for weeks and months. Um, you're gonna to have to be comfortable with us. We're your organ building family. And the minute there's stress or tension there, it does show up in the sound of the pipes. We like joyous, comfortable, agreeable organs, even if they blow the roof off. <laughs> So Sebastian brought together old pipes from the old Mayflower organ, old pipes from another instrument that he had available, and there's some brand new pipes built. 
and he's manipulated the fine adjustments and the scaling of all these pipes to make them sound beautifully together even though they were created in different places in different times. So that is quite a talent. He's really quite a brilliant man in terms of understanding the science of both the organ, but he also understands the science of architecture. And he knows how the organ has to fit in the room. I always think that an organ should have no wasted metal. Every pipe should count. Every, every pipe should make a statement, should have character, should move you, should just be vibrant and wonderful. The beauty of the pipe organ and the reason it's been so effective for centuries is that it does what human beings do. It sings. Sebastian Gluck of course has an agenda to sell an organ but it's beyond that for him. His goal isn't sales as much as it is delivering fine art and delivering a tool that can help a congregation worship. A really fine pipe organ, and this is a, a very good example of a very fine pipe organ, um, two ingredients. The, the designer builder has to hear the sound in his or her head before it comes out. So you, you have to have someone who understands music and how, uh, how you make music with pipes and how that all fits together. That's the ingredient number one. Two is fine craftsmanship. All the components, the pipes, everything's well made. I think there must be something in it because it's, so, it's alternating between soft and loud. Organs are living, breathing entities. And organs do behave the way humans do. So when it gets too hot or too humid or too cold or too dry, or they're physically abused or someone tries to tamper with them, they get cranky and you end up with problems. It is a very difficult thing to convey to people that although this is a complex machine, there are also musical instruments. And every pipe is a musical instrument and treated as a musical instrument. And so when I have a pipe and I'm voicing it, I'm in there with my little tools doing basically micro orthodonture, the, it, is, it is a living, breathing instrument. Organ building is a calling, yeah. You can't get away from it. You can't walk away. <laughs> it's, once you do it, that's it. It's your life.